For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Uh, Madam Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 3371. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 160, H.R. 3371. A bill to direct the Secretary of the Interior to complete all actions necessary for certain land to be held in restricted fee status by the Ugala Sioux Tribe and Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, a gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Collins, and a gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Gallego, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Georgia. Uh, Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and to include extraneous material on H.R. 3371, the bill now under consideration. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I uh, yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, H.R. 3371, the Wounded Knee Memorial and Sacred Site Act introduced by Congressman Johnson from South Dakota would place approximately 40 acres of fee land within the Pine Ridge Reservation into restricted fee status for the Aglala si uh, Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. The land would be held as a memorial and a sacred site in remembrance of the Indian people killed in the Wounded Knee Massacre in 1890. In the mid and late 1800s, there were many armed conflicts between tribes, settlers, and the U.S. military on the Great Plains and in the western United States. This contributed to distrust, fear, and misconceptions between groups, and the Wounded Knee Massacre was a result of that atmosphere. On December 29, 1890, a group of Lakota Indians led by Chief Spotted Elk had made camp near Wounded Knee Creek on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. U.S. Army 7th Cavalry Troop were sent there to disarm the Lakota. A struggle occurred between the U.S. Army and some of Chief Spotted Elk's band, a majority of which consisted of women and children. A shot rang out and the U.S. Army opened fire on the largely unarmed group. At that time, it was estimated that approximately 300 Indian people were killed. In September of 2022, the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe jointly purchased 40 acres of land where an old trading post was located. The piece of land also contains a portion of the area where the Wounded Knee Massacre took place. On October 21st, 2022, both tribes signed a covenant stating that this property shall be held and maintained as a memorial and a sacred site without any economic development and pro prohibited any gaming on the land. I applaud Mr. Johnson for working collaboratively with both tribes to develop H.R. 3371, which would place the 40 acres into restricted fee status held jointly by both tribes and memorializes the covenant between them. Restricted fee land contains the same restrictions against alienation and taxation as land held in trust, but title is not held by the federal government. It is held by the Oglala Sioux and the Cheyenne River Sioux tribes. This legislation and the land it sets aside will memorialize and honor the Indian men, women, and children that were killed in 1890. Thank you to the gentleman from South Dakota, Mr. Johnson, and the Oglala Sioux and the Cheyenne River Sioux tribes for their work on this important legislation. And I urge my colleagues to support this bill. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Georgia reserves. Gentleman from Arizona is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of H.R. 3371, the Wounded Knee Massacre Memorial and Sacred Site Act, introduced by my colleague from South Dakota, Representative Johnson. This legislation is an important step to honor Lakota lives lost at Wounded Knee and honor the Lakota for generations to come. In particular, this bill would place approximately 40 acres of land located within the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation into restricted fee status for the Gala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. This is the land believed to be the site of the 1890 Wounded Knee Massacre. In the late 1880s, tribes began holding ghost dances for the renewal of stolen land and in protest of the U.S. government, a government that prohibited American Indians from practicing their religious freedom. In December of 1890, the government sent U.S. Army 7th Cavalry troops to disarm Lakota near Wounded Knee Creek. 
A struggle occurred, and the, and the 7th Cavalry brutally massacred over 350 American Indian men, women, and children near Wounded Creek. The Wounded Knee Massacre was one of the most atrocious acts in our nation's history. The healing is still continuing today. In 2022, the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe purchased this land and signed a covenant to hold and maintain the land as a memorial and sacred site. Representative Johnson's bill affirms the co that covenant and would allow the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe to hold, maintain, and protect the land as a memorial and sacred site without any development. I urge my colleagues to support this legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Arizona reserves. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield five minutes to the gentleman from South Dakota, the lead sponsor of this bill, Mr. Johnson. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In December 1890, Chief Spotted Elk and his band of Lakota, including uh, many women and children, were moving from, uh, from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, uh, the reservation, to the Pine Ridge uh, Sioux uh, Reservation. As was mentioned, they were stopped by the Army's 7th Cavalry, and they were forced to make camp at Wounded Knee Creek in South Dakota. The next morning, on December 29th, the 7th Cal Cavalry attempted to disarm the Lakota. A struggle ensued, a shot ran out, and before long, the 7th Cavalry was opening fire on the Lakota. Uh, almost all of them unarmed, and uh, as was mentioned earlier, most women and children. More than 300 non-combatants were killed. Mr. Speaker, this, this was a massacre. D too many think of Wounded Knee as something that uh, happened in the uh, long ago past and uh, in a faraway place. The inaccuracy of that view was driven home to me in June when I went to the site and I spoke to the descendants of Wounded Knee. There I sat at length uh, with an elder whose grandmother survived that day. He grew up hearing from her own voice of the fear, of the violence, of the tragedy of that day. Mr. Speaker, this was not a history book. This was his grandmother. Close by at St. John's Church, I looked at the site where the wounded and the dying were taken. The floorboards of that church are still stained with their blood. These are real people. These are real places. These are not ancient tales of a distant land. Our, state, our nation has struggled with how best to remember, uh, to mourn, that terrible day. On the 100th anniversary of Wounded Knee, this body issued a formal apology and expressed deep regret for the actions of that day. And that is obviously altogether appropriate, although on its own, it is woefully insufficient. Last year, the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe exercised tremendous leadership by coming together to purchase the 40 acres uh, surrounding this site, an area that was mentioned uh, was site to just uh, an old trading post. Uh, the management of that site was not an appropriate memory of those who had died that day. And so this bill, the Wounded Knee Massacre Memorial and Sacred Site Act, would place those 40 acres into restricted fee status, in, in essence placing them into trust for the tribes. That would provide the tribes additional tools that they could use to better protect this sacred land. I want to recognize the leadership of the tribal leaders involved. Firstly, President Frank Starr comes out, who graces our body with his presence in this chamber today. But also Chairman Ryman LeBeau, former President Kevin Killer, former Chairman Harold Frazier. We have spent months working together along with committee staff and along with the Department of Interior to craft this important legislation. My colleagues, I ask for a yes vote on this bill. Wounded Knee is sacred ground. It has been hallowed by the blood of innocent women and children. It deserves protection. 
This act can give the tribes, the descendants of those who died, the tools they need to do just that, and I would yield back. Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I have no further requests for time, and I'm prepared to close, and I continue to reserve. Gentleman from Georgia Reserves, gentleman from Arizona is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support the session. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields. Gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, this legislation will further allow the Lakota people to memorialize and honor their relatives and ancestors killed in the Wounded Knee Massacre. It gives title of the land to both of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe while ensuring that the land has the protections that restrictions against alienation and taxation provide. I urge the adoption of this build, bill and yield back the uh, balance of my time. Gentleman yields. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Bill H.R. 3371? I'm sorry. Uh, those in favor, say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the... Um, Mr. Speaker. George is recognized. I object to the vote on the ground that a quorum is not present and make the point of order that a quorum is not present. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on the motion will be postponed.